This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. God didn't get you into that problem. You got yourself into that problem by listening to Satan or your own flesh. But God has a plan and a way out of everything. You say, well, what if I go blow God's plan? Well, listen, if you blow plan A, God has plan B. Of course, your next thought, yeah, but what if I blow, go, you know, blow plan B? He has plan C. Of course, we could go all the way through and say, yeah, but what if I run out of alphabet? Well, God will go back to double A. I mean, he has more answers than you have problems and more ways of escape than you can even imagine. And if you'll simply turn to the Lord in each situation, he will get you out of that. You cannot deviate off the path and God doesn't have a road that'll get you back onto the path. He'll get you back in uh, to the right path if you'll just be honest and open before him. This is the God we serve. He cannot be faced with a situation that there is no answer for. There's an answer for every situation. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. So for all you women out there watching today that have often said, you know, we need more teaching on women from the Word of God. Well, I just try to teach the whole of the Word of God, but today your prayers are answered. We're going to talk about Ruth in the Old Testament, give you an outline of it, and then I even have a series on the book of Ruth of the Old Testament saints and uh, writers and things like that. So you'll be blessed by it as we take a look into it. She's one of the heroes of the Word of God. In fact, we're going to find out her name is even mentioned into the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, again, that's something else, especially for a Gentile woman. This is great. And so, again, for those of, you know, I often get these questions in meetings and stuff, and I don't mind answering the questions. I just don't like some of the bad attitudes behind it. When some of the women ask, well, why aren't there more, you know, why isn't there more in teaching on women today and women can take positions in the church? Yes, they can. This is found in the Word of God. But does God really call that many women? That's the point I want to bring out. And listen, I'm not God, so don't blame me. But throughout the word of God, God chose more men than women. I don't ask me why. It's apparently when you get to heaven and God answers your question, you're going, oh, that's it? Well, I should have figured that out myself. God does not break common sense, but God is God. And throughout the word of God, we've had a couple of queens in the Old Testament. We had uh, Esther as a queen, we had a Jezebel who wasn't too good of a choice, you know, or it wasn't too good of a queen, but again, she was there. And it's interesting, though, of all the writers of the Word of God, there were no women. I'm sorry. I'm, listen, don't get upset with me. God's the one that chose them. There was no women. There's books about women. I mean, we have in the Word of God, we have Esther. And we have Ruth, and Ruth will be talking about today again from the Word of God. And again, this will be a great blessing as we study her because she has tremendous things to offer to both men and women as far as God watching over your life, protecting and keeping it. And again, there were no women writers of the Word of God. In fact, really honestly, if you want to get into what you would call racism, of course, we always want to blame God for everything. There were all, there was only one Gentile writer of the entire Word of God. Every writer of the Old Testament was a Hebrew, a Jew, but in the New Testament, only Luke is the only one who wrote in the New Testament that was a Gentile. But yeah, we got find open continually to Gentiles in the Word of God as to exactly why I don't know, but I'll ask God when we get to heaven in the meantime, time, I'm not going to blame him. I'm not going to come against him. And again, I'm going to be one of those that finds out in heaven and go, well, thank you for letting me know. I can, I can see that. But in the meantime, we just have to go with the word of God and understand this is the way God did it in his word. And so, uh, you know, let's come back to it again. This is the important thing. So we're going to be taking up today from the word of God, this lady in the word of God named Ruth and how that God blessed her. God used her tremendously. And so let's take a look at Ephesians chapter two. First of all, I'm going to read verses 11 through verse 13. It says here, wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. By that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who at one time were afar off are brought near by the blood of Christ. In these verses, we find out again that God makes choices in the word of God and God has chosen certain ones. Again, as I brought out in the very beginning as to why he chose you know, more men than women, I don't know, but we find it true. But those that were found in the word of God, were tremendously used women of God. 
and not only influence women, but men. And men in the Bible are not there just to influence men, they're to influence all of us. Young people are there to influence all ages. We have Timothy, we have Titus, found in the word of God, young people. We have even Samuel being chosen to be a prophet. At the age of five years old, God began to speak to him at a very early age, he became a prophet. But that doesn't mean he only speaks out to young people. We don't find those kinds of division in the word of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for everybody. So again, the life here we're going to be talking about of Ruth is going to be tremendously beneficial to us. But remember, she was called a Gentile, but only a Gentile in the flesh. Paul pointed this out again in Ephesians chapter 2 that really... You know, races only exist as far as your skin is concerned. That's about, you know, I don't know how, how deep it is, but it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, uh, thin. And that's how deep, but underneath that, we're told in Acts chapter 17, he's made of one blood, all mankind. Anything that has to do with the inside of your body can be used by anybody. It doesn't matter. You know, if you've got a heart condition, and they're going to have to replace your heart and say, we're going to have to do a heart transplant. The moment they find a heart, you don't say, did it come from a woman or a man? I don't want a woman's heart or I don't want a man's heart. I don't want to wake up tomorrow thinking like a woman. Well, that has nothing to do with it. And you might say, well, what color was the person? Are they black, white, Hispanic? Na what nationality are they? Because I don't want some oriental heart. Listen, a heart is a heart. Underneath the skin, we are exactly the same. Jesus didn't shed his skin for us. He shed his blood for us. And to be honest with you, the skin is one of the only things that you cannot get from somebody else. If you have a skin graph, it comes from you. It comes from your own body. But any other part under there in your body can be used by someone else. I mean, everything from your eyes and, uh, you know, down to your internal organs, such as your kidneys and your liver can be transferred from someone else or to someone else. Again, these things are things that God has placed within us, but can be used. He's simply pointing out that he's made by one blood, all races of men on the face of the earth. We all came from actually one blood, which was Adam himself. But again, it comes down to it that we were not Gentiles. She is going to be seen because what's important about her is that Ruth was a Moabitess. And she was part of a cursed race. In fact, God put a curse on that race because they withstood Israel in the wilderness. And so withstood them that God put a curse on that nation. But listen, when God puts a curse on that nation, it's for unbelief and opposition toward God. But any person in there is free to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And we're going to find out that Ruth is a great one that did that. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever looked back on your life and it was evident that the hand of God was working for you all the time? Of course, the answer is yes. I look back on my life, there's even some jobs I've had. I wonder, why did I have that job? And sometime in my life, something came across my path that I learned on that job that I had, which might have lasted a month or two or three months, like some I had between years in college, that some I didn't like, and later said, I'm, I wish I'd never had that job, but found out later, years down the road, God was working in my life in that whole thing. And of course, your answer has to be yes, every one of us who are grown up in the Lord and have matured in the Lord, I can look back on that and say, you know what? God's had his hand on me all the time, even when I didn't know about it. It seems like that blessings actually went out of their where to find you at the time that you needed them most. So blessings like they came upon you, as it says in Deuteronomy, and overtake you. It seems like, again, blessings just went out of their way to find you. It just seemed to be at the right time, at the right place, that those blessings showed up. It's almost like you've been playing with loaded dice, but loaded just for you. If we follow the Lord and walk in faith, God turns around each situations and makes one of those situations, every one of them, work together for our good. This is Romans 8, 28. Life is not fair, but as a Christian, you can have an edge over everybody else. Life can be great knowing you're always going to win, but sometimes we just get upset at how long it takes. And even though the circumstances look like they're coming against us to walk in faith in the midst of all that, God has promised many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord who delivers them out of them all. And Ruth is going to be a tremendous example of that. In fact, maybe the idea of loaded dice working for us began with God the Father, because here's a great example. Ruth ran into all kinds of problems, but because she was a believer, she accepted the Lord, God turned every one of these situations around and made a tremendous blessing out of her life because he put tremendous blessings into her life. Ruth was a Moabitess, a member again, like I said, of a cursed race, hated by Israel. Ruth's life was surrounded by paganism. The religion worshiped many gods of which all of them were demons. And to rid the nation of curses, that's like droughts and famines and plagues and things like that, children were offered in fire burned to Molech. 
children were marked at a very young age to be sacrificed in the fire later on. And it was even thought an honor by the parents to have your child chosen as an offering to bring blessings such as rain and sun and good crops, sexual orgies were conducted in the temple. Young girls were chosen at a young age to be prostitutes in the temple. This was also considered an honor by their parents to have their daughter chosen as one of the prof- or as one of the prostitutes in the temple. Ruth never knew a God of love and mercy. All she knew was the gods that hated her, that were angry, needed to be appeased by human life and human blood being offered. That's all she ever knew. But in God's foreknowledge, God knew about her. Listen, God's foreknowledge simply has arranged everything. You are not forced by God's uh, making. You're not forced by God's predestination by his sovereignty to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. He never makes anybody accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, but according to his foreknowledge, he knows it. Romans 8, 29 says, for whom he did foreknow, he did predestine. Those he foreknew, he predestined. You see, when you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, it didn't take God by surprise. He knew it long before the foundation of the world, exactly when and and exactly how you would accept Jesus as Savior, but he didn't make it happen. He is omniscient. He knows everything. To be honest with you, great power isn't physical. Great power is all knowledge. To have all knowledge means you have all power. And because God knows everything that's going to happen and exactly how it's going to happen, then he makes answers for them. This is what makes God, God. So in God's foreknowledge, he knew that there was going to come a day when she would be confronted with the simplicity of the gospel. And it was going to come because a family had moved from Israel, actually wrongly moved. They moved there out of looking for a job and positions and things like that. They moved to Moab and there they did not live for the Lord, but because of their customs, because of the neat things they knew, they shared a little of the gospel. And Ruth is one that accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and God even turned cursing into blessing. He knew this family would desert, but he arranged for them to come in contact with Ruth, and Ruth would marry one of their sons. And so it says in Ruth chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2, it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he, his wife, and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the names of his wife was Naomi, and the same name of his two sons was Malon and Chilion. And they came into the country of Moab, and they continued, or they lived there. God knew about Ruth before she ever knew about God. God knew her name. He knew where she would live. He knew about her marriage to this Jewish man that came in from Israel and moved into Moab. He knew about her religion. He knew about her heart. He even knew her secret thoughts on the inside. But God not only knew her present condition, but had a future for her. Aren't you glad the same thing is true about you? That God knew of your condition at the time, but God had a future plan for you. But because he knew you would accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he put together a plan for your entire life and listen for all of eternity. God has a plan for you down here, a plan through death and a plan into eternal life once you get into heaven. So again, he had a future for her. God God brought a Moabite into the commonwealth of Israel, just as we read about in Ephesians to begin with. And God brought a woman into the genealogy of David and even eventually the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll be taking this up when we come back. And again, I want to remind you, we have this series on the life of Ruth and on the blessings of Ruth that you listen, you can be tremendously blessed by. I'll see you right after the break. There are four unique characters in the book of Ruth, Elimelech, Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz. Each person shows us a different aspect of our relationships with other people and our relationship with God. From Elimelech, you will learn about lessons from a backslider. In Naomi, you'll see how a backslider is fully restored. Ruth will show us how God provides in our times of need. And from Boaz, we will see how Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. Join Bob Yandian for these teachings and learn from each of these four characters as they speak to you about your own walk with the Lord, as well as showing you more about Jesus and what he has done for us. To order character studies in Ruth, go to bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life, 
through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Pastors, if you would like to schedule Bob Yandian to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to bobyandian.com forward slash invite. Just before the break, I was talking about the fact that with Ruth, God not only knew her present condition, but again had a future for her. The same is true for you. God knows all about your future. And God knows what you'll be doing 10 years or 15 years now. Even though you don't know, the good news is you will not be able to enter into any problem that God has not already made a way of escape of. God didn't get you into that problem. You got yourself into that problem by listening to Satan or your own flesh. But God has a plan and a way out of everything. You say, well, what if I go blow God's plan? Well, listen, if you blow plan A, God has plan B. Of course, your next thought, yeah, but what if I blow, go, you know, blow plan B? He has plan C. Of course, we could go all the way through and say, yeah, but what if I run out of alphabet? Well, God will go back to double A. I mean, he has more answers, then you have problems and more ways of escape than you can even imagine. And if you'll simply turn to the Lord in each situation, he will get you out of that. You cannot deviate off the path that God doesn't have a road that'll get you back onto the path. He'll get you back in uh, to the right path if you'll just be honest and open before him. This is the God we serve. He cannot be faced with a situation that there is no answer for. There's an answer for every situation. And very quickly, while we're talking about this, you know, Perhaps already Ruth is speaking to your life. God had a plan for her and what a tremendous plan we'll be talking about here in just the next few minutes. But he has a plan for your life too. It comes back to this. More than being saved, God wants you to become a disciple. Salvation is for your spirit, but discipleship is for your soul. And God wants you to grow in the things of God. That's why I've been called to the ministry. My main purpose in in the ministry is not just to get people saved, but to make uh, converts into disciples, to make you to where you can stand up and be stable in life, constantly stable in the things of God. This is the purpose, and this is why I have a ministry. I'd like you to join me in this. In fact, if you you like this ministry, I'd like you to join me and become a partner with me. You can go to my website, bobyandian.com, and there you'll find a place where you can become a partner with me. Thank you in advance for doing so. Again, God had a future for her. God brought a Moabitess into the commonwealth of Israel. This is what we read in the the book of Ephesians when we started off with that you are outside the commonwealth of Israel, but she was brought into them by simple faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. She never had a Jewish background, didn't know anything about the Jewish nation. She was not a Jew, but yet because of faith, she got accepted into that commonwealth. That is those believers in the nation who were believers. Again, not all Israel is Israel, because not all Israel is believers, but within Israel is the commonwealth of Israel. And so God brought her into the genealogy of David and also of Jesus. God vindicated her mother-in-law, brought her from carnality back to a place of spiritual and natural blessing in Israel. God used the events already in motion to set other events in motion. There came a time when both of the sons died and one of them was married here, in this case to Ruth. But when that happened, Ruth had a choice to make as also did Orpah, who was the other woman that married the other son, where Orpah decided to stay in this nation of Moab, we find Ruth deciding, no, I'm going to go with you. So God used events again already in motion, then set other events in motion, and God used the disobedience of Elimelech and his sons to bring Ruth to him, that is to God. Even in carnality, this family had an effect on Ruth. Malon, her husband, must have brought her home where she heard about the beliefs of the Israelite family. Her heart must have desired to know this God, though she made no decision toward the Lord at that time. It was wrong for her to marry Malon because why? God told Israel not to marry unbelievers, especially of other races. But again, that was set in motion, yet God used the disobedient act to bring Ruth to him. And so even the disobedience of some people, God can turn around, even though it may not bring blessing to you, it can bring blessing to somebody else. The message she heard was stronger than the disobedience she had surrounded herself with and stronger than the influence of the nation she lived in, Moab. When confronted with a decision, she said yes to the gospel and she hung on to Naomi. I'm again, I'm going to say that when confronted with the decision to stay or to go with her mother-in-law, she decided to go with her mother-in-law. And it was more than that, more than I'm just going to go to Israel with you. Listen to what she said. Ruth chapter one, verses 14 through 17, talking about the daughters crying and weeping because their husbands had died. And these two sisters 
These two sisters were weeping and crying because their husbands had died and now they were faced with a situation. Do I stay here in this nation and, and make it on my own or I do, do I go back with the mother-in-law? Ruth chapter one, verse 14 through 17, they lifted up their voice and wept again and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung on to her and she said, behold, your sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, ask me not to leave you or to return from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. Look at this next phrase, your God, my God. She accepted the Lord as her savior, not only just following after a woman. She said, I'm giving my life to the Lord. Verse 17, where you die, I will die. And there I I will be buried. The Lord do so to me and more. If anything but death parts you and me. Orpah said no to the gospel, married into the same family as Ruth, heard the same stories of the family's faith, was left a widow just like Ruth was, but was given the same choice to accept the Lord and did not do it. Listen, we can bring people to the gospel and we can bring the gospel to people, but we cannot make them accept it. And the gospel was presented to both of them and yet only Ruth accepted. But she not only accepted, she said, I'm gonna stick with you because I need to know more about this God I have accepted. I've never seen a God of love. I've never seen a God of mercy. But the moment you introduce me to him, I want to know more. But you know what? I need someone that can bring me and help me come into discipleship. And this is why as Christians, we not only get people saved and go into all the world and preach the gospel so they'll be saved, but we also go into all the world and we teach them all things that Jesus has told us, all things the word has taught us so we can make disciples out of them. Jesus said to those Jews, Jews especially, You'd have thought, well, they're close to the gospel. He spoke to the Jews on one day in John chapter eight and said to those Jews that just believed on him, he said, now, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Again, we can bring the gospel to a person but cannot make them accept it. On that day that Jesus spoke to the Jews that believed on him, there were also many Jews that did not believe on him, yet they all heard the same gospel. Two thieves hung on Je beside Jesus on the cross, both saw the same thing, heard the same thing, walked down the same road with him, were in jail with him, heard him say the sayings from the cross, but only one said yes and one said no, both seeing and hearing exactly the same thing. And that's where it comes down to the individual choice of every believer, for God is not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come into redemption. So we then find when Ruth and Naomi came to Bethlehem, they were both financially destitute. Ruth took a beggar's position as a gleaner in Israel. In other words, a gleaner was one that stayed behind all the ones that, raised, that took the crops. And as she, they took the crops off of there's little pieces back here left behind. That's what gleaners were allowed to do. It was part of the word of God. They were allowed to glean the fields and not be taken in and not be, not be taken in for stealing. It was allowed for them to do it. So she became a gleaner in Israel. And she chose the field of Boaz. Out of all the fields she was there, she chose the field of Boaz. This was her first leading by the Holy Spirit as a new convert. And the point of it is Boaz is going to fall in love with her, sees her across the field, doesn't care about her position in life, doesn't care about her financial situation, doesn't even care the fact that she's not a Jew, she's a Moabitess. He falls in love with her and then commands his men, leave big chunks for her back here. I mean, don't just leave a few. You drop some purposely just so she can find it. And of course, her guidance by the Holy Spirit led him to her into a life of fulfillment, a life where she became a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we find that Ruth met Boaz. In Ruth chapter two, verses 10 and 11, then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said to him, why have I found grace in your eyes that you should take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said to her, it has fully been shown to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to a nation which you did not even know before. Look, jump down with me at verses 15 and 16, and here's where Boaz Boaz blesses Ruth. And when she had risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and don't rebuke her for it. 
So Ruth brought a great pile of grain home to Naomi. Naomi must have said, what did you do, steal from somebody? No, this was just laying in the field and the workers had already gone past and I just started picking up everything I could, not knowing that again, he had fallen in love with her and wanted her to be his wife. Ruth told Naomi about meeting a man who was Boaz. The moment that Naomi recognized that name as a kinsman, now she knew the plan of God. And Boaz could be Ruth's kinsman redeemer to bring her back in the family of God's people. It was allowed in the word of God to find a kinsman redeemer. And she did and found out that through relationship with him, that she was somehow related to him. It was a kinsman. So Ruth went to Boaz and asked him to be her redeemer and her husband. And Boaz loved her enough to marry her. She must have been taken back and realized, well, the Bible says I can do it. The law says I can do it. I'm going to throw myself out there. I'm going to be embarrassed out of my mind, but I'm going to ask him if he would be my kinsman redeemer and even marry me knowing he's rich. I'm poor. He's a Jew. I'm a Gentile. He's part of the covenant family. I'm not part of the covenant family. He's part of that, that uh, redemptive group within Israel. I am not part of that group within Israel, but you know what? Maybe he would accept me. Even Malon's death was used by God to put Ruth into the proper position to be redeemed by a kinsman. And by marrying Boaz, Ruth became a joint heir into the family of Boaz and Naomi, into the lineage of David. David became her great, 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 great grandson. And later on, even the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. All this is found in Matthew chapter one. In the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ, we find their names, their women's names found in a genealogy where usually it's just men's names. And the women that are mentioned there, only one or two of them were Jews. The rest of them were Gentiles. And she was one of them. And if God could do that for her, think of what he could do for you. You know what? This puts a whole new emphasis on spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and whosoever will may come. And anyone that finds Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God knew it before the foundation of the world. He didn't make them accept him. He knew they would accept him. And by doing that, has a plan for them. And the moment they get saved, they enter a plan that God had for them before the foundation of the world. And guess what? You too. So listen to me, for those of you that are scared right now, circumstances against you, financial pressure, looks like you're gonna lose your job, your family looks like it's falling apart. God saw all this coming. He didn't make it happen, but he has a plan to get you out of it. Simply throw yourself on the mercy of God. Throw yourself on the word of God, just like Ruth did. Look at the blessings that are gonna come out of it. God will do so much for you that there is not time enough to explain it. There's not even enough faith inside of you to even see it right now. But when the time comes, you'll look back on it and say, God had his hand on me the whole time. The dice were loaded for me, not against me. And when God threw those dice out, he knew exactly how it would come up. And I'm on the blessed receiving end of it every single time. Thanks for being with us today. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll be taking up a whole new subject. Have a great day. See you next time. Ministers, you can access valuable resources free at ministersclub.com. You'll find topical studies, sermon outlines, PDF books, answers to many questions, and plenty of encouragement. All free. Just go to ministersclub.com. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.